Judy again, this time with Tariq Holmes, Dennis, what's going on mate? Nothing much man, thanks for having me on here. Yeah? That's nah, good man, it's good. Um, you've had a short career, but we'll get through, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, let's talk about where you started, you was at Charlton to start with, yeah. yeah that, was my, that was my first academy, um, started off at Sydney Sports before that, Okay. quite a few players done quite well from there. And then, um, yeah, Charlton, went to Charlton, was there for years, man. There for, from seven to okay. 20. So you got, you got you went through the whole thing. Yeah. Signed a big, you signed a big deal, on it? Three years? Um, I can't, I think I did sign a three-year contract there, yeah. I think that was the last one I signed. Okay. Before I left to okay. go to Huddersfield. Is, is that, um, is that odd, like, signing a three years? It's such a young player, or is you just ha happy because you've been there for so long? Um, I, I loved it there when I was young. Yeah, I loved it there. And um, I signed my first deal at 17. And I think by the time I was 20, I'd signed three. Okay. Yeah, so that would be my last one. Yeah, so they just always, they might offer you your first deal. It won't be great. And then this year, oh, you've got potential. Went on loan, come back. Yeah. Get another one and so on. Get into the first team and that. So, yeah. No. So you're saying by the third deal, the money was up? <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> in football, in football terms, nah. But it was at that age, I was happy with it. Okay, let me ask you something. Um, obviously, I'm like trying to promote the podcast and stuff. I'm going through Instagrams, and I'm seeing like young players, and they put footballer or pro footballer and their club they play for. Like, why do they do that if they haven't even seen the first team change room and that? You know, you see social media. It's it's, it's different nowadays, isn't it? When I was 17, Instagram weren't really a big thing. Now it's like your profile can be huge with that. And it's like people will push, push the profile and it's like it'll almost help them on the pitch. If okay, you know what I mean? Okay. At a club, but that's, that's probably the wrong thing with football now. Like obviously you're young, probably haven't done much, but where social media is like so big and it's a big platform probably makes you like run before you can walk. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's like someone's boosting their name before their talent and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Let's talk about your youth team. So you played for England. Yeah, once though, only once. <laughs> oh, only once. we were only one game <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. We, you must have been gassed though. No, I was buzzing. I think I was maybe 17 then, uh, maybe 18. Yeah, it was wicked. Though. It was wicked. I went with one of my teammates, Toby. Okay. He, he got in as well. Um, he was there that time. Tariq Fosu was there. Okay. Um, I think it was Chuba maybe there. Yeah, we had a decent team. It was a good team there. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think you never got called up again? You know what? I went, um, we played against Belgium and I was playing right back. Came off, I came off the bench. I done all right, nearly scored a screamer. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I was just on standby from then for like the next season. I never, I never got back in. I was like, boy, it's difficult. But I think my age group was like, Luke Shaw was there. Oh, okay. Um, who else was there? There was a couple of good left backs, so it was difficult. I was happy that I at least got the one. So what they do, they tell you you're going to be on standby. You get a text or something. Yeah, so you got an email. When I first got called up, they told the club and they was like, yeah, it's going to come away with this trip. And then um, then after that trip was gone, I remember waiting. I was thinking, please, like, let me get into the next team. <laughs> when I did it, I was pissed. I was actually pissed. I was hurt, but like, I, I realised it is what it is, man. And what? then they'll email you and say, oh, you're on standby for this for this um, tour, this okay. standby for this one. And then I just never went back in there. So what, it affected you that much not being picked again? Not like affected me. I just remember waiting for that next one <laughs> thinking, yeah, surely. Yeah. And it was like, no, nah. so I was pissed. But then after that, I didn't really care. It's Wait. just that next one, I wanted okay. to be in that. Are you, but you're a first teamer by now, isn't it? So you're not really... I think that might have just been before okay, I went on loan, okay. maybe like a, a season before. Okay. I went on loan quite kind of young, like 18. Okay. Um, so yeah, it was before that. Um... Did that give you like an ego boost? Like you're going alone thinking, I'll play for England. Like this should be a breeze. Or would you like mellow? No, you know what? When I went on loan, it just happened. It happened mad quick. And I was only playing, I was only playing like 23, well, it was 21s back then, 18s, 21s. Um, and then training with the first team. So I hadn't played like no first team football. But I was training with the first team quite a lot. Okay. So when I went on loan, like I remember going in and I was like still slim when I was when I was 18 I was skinny man and um, after I had played a few games I remember the lads were like oh when you came in we were surprised we thought yeah you're gonna struggle because I was small yeah 
but it was just calm. Like I, I loved it. Like going on loan was the best thing I could have done. Where did you first yes. go on loan? Um, Oxford in okay. League Two. So yeah, I was there for the first half of that season. Um, was play start, when I got in the team, I stayed in, played like seventeen or eighteen games. Okay, and then um, my they signed someone from the Championship on a three year deal, and the manager was like, "Look, you can either stay, and you're probably not going to play as much, but you can You, I would rather you actually leave and go play." So I left and went to Plymouth in the same league, which was they were at the top. Okay, Oxford okay. really at the bottom, so it only made sense. Oh, decent. And then we ended up like we went to the playoffs and that that season, and that was like that three months was probably the most enjoyable for me. Like looking back on it, I was living like with it was Bobby Reed, like Zach Cancer was there, Cads. We had a good little squad. Jason Banton was there. Um, we had a good group, man. So where it was so far, it's like four and a half hours away. It was good to have that that um, bunch of guys around me. Yeah, that's decent. Ain't it strange that, like, I know three of the names that you've just, or two of the names that you've just named, and they don't play professional football no more. Is it that hard to to maintain at that, to stay at that level? I think that that's the, probably the biggest thing with football, you know. When you look at the people that have, there's so much people with ability that have got to a certain level. It's like getting to the level is probably the easy bit to maintain and stay in there. Like when you see people that have played championship for 10 years, Premier League for 10 years, even League One, 10 years. Like, it's not easy, man. You see people that probably have the ability to play in the Prem or the Championship every week, but something don't click, whether it's unfortunate through injuries, manager changes, um, personal circumstances, mm. or attitudes just not right. Like, there's 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 so much variables in football, in it? Yeah. And maintaining it is probably the most, like, the hardest bit. Taking away your injury, which we'll get to, how did you keep yourself at a level? Because... Every game, every team you went to, you played. Yeah. How did you keep yourself at that high standard? You know what? I, my, I think I've naturally got a lot of discipline just from growing up and I've always known I've wanted to be like the best whatever I do. <laughs> Obviously, you're not always going to be the best, but if you try. Yeah. But for me, like when I was at Huddersfield, that was, when I first moved there, the first three months was peak for me. Like it was hard. <laughs> like I, re I remember the, the um, the quality difference was, it was a big step up. Okay. It took me a while to adjust. Like, after I got it, I was like, oh yeah, I feel nice again. But for that first two months, I was thinking, shit, I'm a bit, I'm a bit off it here. <laughs> like, am I, what, I'm not what, sure. Technically and what, in training? Just the speed, the speed, like, you know, the quality and speed, like, where I was at Charlton before, Huddersfield, I know it was the same league, but the quality, with David Wagner came from um, Germany yeah. and these lot were just on bopping. It was, <laughs> it was mad. The speed of training, the intensity, my fitness, I just weren't at the level okay. in e immediately. So it took me a bit of time. I remember getting battered. One coach pulled me into a room and he showed me a training clip and was like, watch like, <laughs> and he's just me and him in the room and he's telling me, look, he fucked you up. Like literally going through, rewinding it, making me watch it again and again. Serious. And I was like, come out of the room. And I was like, that's mad. Like, that's mad. Then after that, I just clicked in. And then I remember like maybe like a month or so after that, the manager um, pulling me before a game saying like what's the difference been like at first I could tell you was good but you weren't really at it he's like what's the ch what's the change and I was like boy that chat I'm not really used to being down the bottom like that so <laughs> I had to um, pull myself out and like find find it in me to just get to where I knew I needed to and once yeah. I did like I didn't really look back in terms of how I felt I always felt like I was at a good level from there apart from apart from being on the pitch did you struggle like adjusting to like living up there and stuff? Um, yeah, because I had lived away before, like Oxford, Plymouth. Yeah. Oxford was only an hour and a half yeah. away, so I came home all the time. Plymouth, I was there for three months, and I had like all the guys yeah. um, with me. It was it wasn't so bad. Here, I was living on my own, and getting home was just long. We never really had many days off, so there was times where I wasn't playing and I wasn't getting home and it was, it was difficult. It was difficult for sure. There's another London lad, um, Sean Scannell, he was up there with you. Did, yeah. you. did you check with him? Yeah, no, me and Scan's got on well, but you know when, um, when you're up there, like some, he, he had a missus then. Oh, okay. Like it's, it's not always, not every, everyone's got their own life, innit? Yeah. So you're not just going to be like, yo bro, like, <laughs> let's go do this. Like, it's, we saying she had him on smash. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't let him out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so what what else about training did you struggle with? Like you mentioned, your lifestyle is totally different. You're by yourself. Let's go back to football and talk about training. 
what else was it that was that you struggled with that made it hard sorry um so at huds we would play we were training at the same time i was going to play so we were training at three o'clock you know usually you're in nine o'clock yeah. train 11 you're gone by one we was on a for we have monday off then you're in for the rest of the week so oh, really? tuesday you're in at nine gym session in the morning train in the afternoon and you're not leaving till five then the wow. rest of the week you'll be in at one thirty. train at three not leaving until five five thirty. so it was a struggle because you get up you can't do nothing before training because you've got training yeah. by the time you finish training you can't do nothing because <laughs> you're tired and you just want to get home it's late do you know what i mean yeah so that was that was difficult like didn't really do much other than train okay is that what is that what prem teams do because i've watched that um i watched something you know everyone watched the the tottenham and the man city's thing and you know that you see them training in the evenings in the that's evening. it adjust to the match days and I stuff. feel like it's a foreign thing you know I'm not sure if it's that much of an English thing because I think I'm sure Liverpool do it as well okay um to be fair because it does help like when you look at the results that we was getting yeah it must have it must have like helped you come on to Saturday and sometimes when you're tr used to training morning game afternoon you'll get up on a Saturday and by the time three o'clock there you're tired bro. you're like <laughs> This, I'm, I'm tired <laughs> you know what I mean but you get used to it so your energy is there at the beginning of the game so basically he's structuring you to literally just concentrate on football then because it's like a job isn't it like yeah. it is a job but it you're is, doing yeah, a 9 yeah. to 5 like you're getting up you're going to work you're coming home you're too tired to do anything else yeah so it's just straight football yeah no it's true it, it might be the best thing because it's just football isn't it you're disciplined you're focused but at the same time sometimes it's like you could do with that yep. bit of like going up going out and going for food or shopping after mm. not not necessarily that but just something away from football yeah do you know what i mean but but do you reckon you feel how like i got a nine to five yeah and that's how i feel it's like a, it's, it's regimented it's like, yeah like even when i get on a train it's like everyone's a zombie blah blah yeah. blah but that's how normal life is isn't no, it so exactly i think now I come out of football i look back on it like pff, that was a dream bro like it's really <laughs> really playing football as a job I think people that have got the um, opportunity to do it I'm not sure if you always appreciate it until it's not there yeah. like completely you might appreciate it, you're happy that you're a footballer but I mean really understand that you're playing football for a job come like <laughs> like, waking I mean? up like please take ball. it in and yeah. do not take it for granted <laughs> like don't take it for granted even if you're in whatever league you're in from conference south to flipping the prem like, yeah, appreciate it, man. I make the most. Let's just go back a bit to when you was at Charlton. Obviously, you was around a lot of your friends, people you grew up with from 7 to 20. Yeah. Off season, are you going to the party holidays and that? Are you having fun? <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. Which ones do you, go, which ones do, you do? Um, From young, so you started at Napa. <laughs> then you start going to a little bit more older ones. <laughs> IB for uh, Miami. Uh, Mexico, yeah, them. them You've done all of them with the boys, yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. stories? They, nah, I got no crazy <laughs> stories. You know, I got no crazy stories. A few, few. Nah, no crazy stories. Yeah, I got a story. Yeah, I went IB for with my boys, and this is the first time I took snooze. Yeah. Yeah. You take? Do you do snooze? Um, it makes me sick, bro. bro I can't listen, stand it. You know. Bang the snooze. Lost my phone. Like, there's a picture of me just slumped <laughs> on some deck chair. And then like, I've lost my phone. So I've ended up speaking to the police. Yeah. So all my friends are recording me saying, oh, why are you snitching? Da, 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 da. I'm thinking, <laughs> I've just lost my phone. I've snoozed off. It's hot. Da, da, da. I think I'll push the girl in her face. She's trying so, to help me. <laughs> bro, from then on, it's mad. It's mad. <laughs> the, the holidays, they're different. You know, you just go on and just let your hair down for a week or so after a long, after a long 10 months, however long it is. You need it, man. You need it. Just go away with your boys and just enjoy. Um, When Huddersfield finally came in for you, how, how did it come about? Did they buy you or did you just end the contract yeah they um they buy they brought, they brought <laughs> me <laughs> um i found it found it happened kind of fast to be fair when i found out like the tr from knowing to moving it was fast it was quick yeah yeah well yeah. your agent just rang you and said he said oh like they're interested in you and then a couple of days later it's like oh yeah they're gonna put in a bid it's due to be accepted decent and get off and like, didn't you think now nah, i want to set charlton <sighs> be honest man we, we got relegated that season oh, okay and i was on the bench what, was, um, it was only two games in okay. like, but I just knew I, I wasn't in the manager's plan and for me it was like I had gone on loan last season in League 1 and played I want to be playing so to go to, to the championship I might as well go to a club that's um, 
a steady championship team. Yeah. I've got to try my luck, man. I feel like I knew I could um, handle that that level. So yeah, it only made sense. Did you think you was going to get promoted or did you just go there thinking? <sighs> Bro, that was the last thing on my mind. Serious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at the, I'm looking at their last few seasons and they were like 18th, 17th, like they're just steady championship team. And I'm thinking this is a good place to go and build my like career, go and play, be around a good setup. Yeah, and boy, get promoted. Like did not, could not have even expected that at all. Did you sign another big deal then? No, I didn't. So I'd signed three years when I went to Huddersfield. Yeah, and um. Obviously, first season we get promoted, and then I got sent out on loan. So it was almost like getting promoted was the best day of my life. But also, it was the other side. It was detrimental because I got sent out on loan, and then that's where I got injured. Okay. So it's like from the loan, it just went down downhill, slippery, bro. Like, all right, let's talk about Huddersfield for a bit. So let's talk about the Wembley day. You was on the bench, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you think you was gonna play? So maybe like 20, 30 minutes in, the left back got injured, and he's down, bro. bro down like yeah. for a bit the manager's like oh yeah go get warm and I was like flipping oh boy you know <laughs> like you're happy you're excited and yeah. that, but you're looking around like bro there's 80,000 people is it like, mad this isn't mad like different I was like this is nuts like I played in the semi-final for about half an hour yeah and that was like 45 40,000 people there and I was like yeah the atmosphere is mad this is it was another level yeah it was crazy it was crazy so the left back gets fit feeling okay. a bit feeling a bit nervous when he's telling you to get warm and that yeah <laughs> um you're getting slack from the fans or you just it's just everyone's just enjoying it or you just blocked day. it out yeah no 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 slack just just the intensity man like the the crowd the atmosphere was nuts like it was yeah it was mad it was really really big um you win get promoted mm. I know you're gassing to your boy saying bro I'm in the prem blah 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 <laughs> you know what I actually wasn't because I remember speaking to my dad like a couple of days on, after. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 hold on. So you're telling me you just got to the Prem, yeah? Yeah. Like everyone's dream, every footballer's yeah. dream. And you're saying you're not gassed to your boys. No, do you know what? I'm gas thinking, boy, how are you playing against Arsenal and United in that next <laughs> season? Like this is, this is sick. But then I thought, I, I remember hearing whispers like, yo, there's like two lists. There's a list where if we go up, we're bringing in X amount of players. If we stay in, we're bringing in X amount of players. If we stayed in the championship, I'm pretty sure I would have stayed at Huddersfield and not gone sign out alone. Okay. We got promoted. So in the back of my head, I wasn't getting too excited thinking, yeah, like Prem, I was thinking, boy, I hope my name's not on that list, you know? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you're getting on holiday and you're thinking, I'm waiting for the message when I get back, like, yo, like you got to sort out a loan or something. Or So that's what, I wasn't like looking too far ahead. I was okay. just waiting to what, see like what the plan was. All the players knew about that, them two lists. I I'm not sure. If every, I'm not sure if it was public knowledge, but I remember getting wind, catching wind of it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So in the back of my head, I was like, "Let me just Chill be out. easy. Let me not get too. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Let me not get ahead of myself." Um, you you get sent out alone, and you're thinking, "Right, let me just impress." So yeah. he just calls me back quick, so I can get into the prem squad, right? But you know what? My 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 plan then was, let me just go and get forty games. And whatever like happen, if you go and play forty games and you play well, whether it's back for them or somewhere, you're gonna be all right. And yeah. my plan was that, bro. Just go and play, like just go and do what you can, and whatever happens, happens in it. Yeah. And I had faith that I'll go and do well because when I went on loan, I felt that was the best football I was playing. But I was yeah. so confident that summer, that I felt, yeah. I felt good, I felt Let, good. Let's talk about the summer before. Um, you go back to preseason. Are you looking after yourself? Or are you just enjoying life because you're going back to a prem team? I'll be real. We had we only had four weeks off. Like we had, um, we obviously we got promoted, so the season was long, long. And then by the time we're coming back, it's only four weeks um, okay. to do anything. So I've got a plan, and I'm sticking to the plan that they've given us. Yeah. And it wasn't too intense. But this is where a fun funniest story, man. So. <laughs> I've gone back to, uh, I've gone to Portsmouth now yeah. and that's my first day, but they've already been there for a week and they've had a preseason game and whatnot. I've gone in thinking, all right, cool, they're going to ease me in. I've been sticking to this program, <laughs> trained. And when I say to you that like, we're doing three V2s, like long period, I, could, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't <laughs> breathe. No, I had to go and sit down, ask Jamal, like Jim, um, Jamal Lowe, yeah. He was just laughing. I'm sitting down on the fence holding the railing, like, can't breathe from my chest. It was, and then the manager, I remember um, at the end of training, my agent phoned me and was like, yo, um, the CEO is saying, like, did we sign the right player or something? Serious? And I was like, oh my God, was it that bad? But it was, I was finished. I couldn't breathe. Then after like a few days, 
I just started training well and just all took, had the first game and everything was just blessed. Yeah. I was feeling that first good. week you was burst. First day, like the worst, the worst thing I've seen, man. I really was sitting on the floor gasping for air. It was mad. How, how does the loan deals work? So do do you have to sweat out yourself or do the club have a list of teams and you just pick which one you want um, to go to? Agent usually will go find whatever club needs what and put your name through to where he thinks that will be good for you or whatever league you're going to go and play. Like I know there was a couple of championship clubs I could have went to, but I don't think I was going to be the first choice. Okay. So I would have been doing the same thing as I'd done this previous season. I was like, I'd rather go League One and play. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, let's go to um, um, Portsmouth. Big club. Big club, yeah. yeah. Um, When you got there, no, let's talk about your, that game, the first, it's, it's your debut, isn't it? Um, For Portsmouth. Portsmouth when you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like, is, did it feel like any other day or did you think this something's not right today or? No, you know, I was, I was buzzing, man. That, their fans are nuts. Yeah. Like, wild. And I was like, yeah, this is a proper, a proper club. Like, and I was excited. As I say, I was playing well. I felt good. Yeah. But then after, after that incident, it was so innocuous, bro. It weren't like no one smashed me. It weren't no mad challenge. Just a bit of Astro on the side of the pitch and my foot, someone pushed me off balance. Yeah. My foot caught. And like, I felt it, but it wasn't mad painful. I was like, oh, I ran it off. I ran it off. Knee just kept on clicking. Then I done a block tackle and then I couldn't walk. I was like, boy, I gotta come off here. I was pissed, man. It's in the first half, isn't it? Thirty-five minutes, yeah. Thirty-five minutes in, and yeah, man, it was mad. It was mad. When I when I got in the change room, I was just thinking, this ain't. This is mad. This is like, this is crazy. It didn't feel, didn't feel good at all. Is, is that the first time you've ever been like seriously injured? Yeah, yeah. But you're thinking, not me. Like that's that's all you think. You'll think, oh, like people get injured, but. It's not surely like it's not gonna be me, do you know what I mean? I'm not gonna have no no mad. And then I remember them saying, Yeah, it's gonna be three or four months, and I was like, Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Like we can get through that. Got the season still. And when I had the scan and I had the operation and it was like, Yeah, it's looking at like more like nine months. That's when I was pissed, man. What did you actually do? Um, chondral defects or the cartilage, um, in my knee gone, meniscus gone, all of that. So it's like bone on bone kind of. So you just writ off your whole knee, yeah, basically. Yeah. I was thinking, boy, if it was gonna be so bad. At least it would have been a mad challenge or something. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But where it was such a innocuous thing, that's what was so frustrating. Did you get sent straight back to Huddersfield or did you stay at Pompey? Uh, my loan just continued for the whole season, but I had to go and do all my rehab at, Hudders at Huddersfield. And that's why um, when I was when it was time to look for a new club and I ended up going to Bristol Rovers, it was a bit difficult with um, a bit difficult with Portsmouth because I want I was hoping to go back there maybe. Yeah, but. They had basically paid me that whole year, but I, w I didn't. Play. I played thirty eight minutes. You know what I mean? And so maybe, basically, on this, you owe us, you owe us money, sort of thing. <laughs> like it's not, it's not gonna make sense, kind of thing. So yeah, I, I was disappointed, man. I really wanted to go back there because yeah, I, I enjoyed the short time that I was there. Felt good, man. Felt good. Yeah. Um. So when you're injured, what are Huddersfield saying to you? Are they saying, oh, just get back fit and we'll help you? Or yeah. is it just you're on your own? No, Huds, Huds were cool, man. I, I can't fault them at all. Back there, doing rehab there with them was wicked. The people there looked after me, man. Like, yeah. I wish, like, my contract, when I went to Bristol Rovers, I still had a year on my deal at Huddersfield. Yeah. I kind of wish I'd have stayed there and okay. done, and just until I was 110%. Yeah. I wish I'd have stayed there. I kind of went to Bristol Rovers, not 100%. Um, Here's one thing. When you're injured for that long, yeah, how does it feel coming in early? Because obviously you've got to come in early. Yeah. You're in the physio room. Your mates will come in, tap you on your shoulder, like get well soon, all of that stuff. And yeah. then you're watching them train. You want to be out there. Like how, what's going through your head? It's the worst, man. See, when you're, we're football guys, isn't it? Man, you, want, you just want to be playing football when you see the team sheet on Saturday. You see the boys just putting on their boots and going out to training, come in, talking, saying, oh, our session was sick or whatever. Yeah. You just sitting there just pissed bro just get in the gym just one up like I mean I just kept myself to myself I had my friends in the change room so like, they kept me going yeah like even the person I was working with Callum Liam like they kept me going and I kind of I was just on I was disciplined I just knew what I had to do I was just thinking all right I'm gonna be back put it in but when you're when you're just there like no one like the staff don't apart from the like the physios care but the staff like they don't really bother with you when yeah. you're not doing anything so that's probably the hardest bit. Not really bit. an asset, innit? Yeah, just like just, dead wood. Yeah, man. And remember, I'm a, I'm rehabbing here where I've already been sent out on loan, so I'm not part of it. Yeah. Do you get me? So you're almost just there for your own... Yeah, it's just mad. Even little things like 
in life, like say you you walked into a room and people are already laughing. Yeah. It make you think like you've missed out. So if you're all the all the boys are coming in with outside banter and you're yeah. inside, it's like, oh, what have I missed? Oh, da, da, yeah. da. And the days, bro, they just go long, man. Like you're there for hours and you're like you're looking forward to little things to tick off. Like at the end of the week, am I doing this? Like am I doing a am I doing a single leg jump or some shit like that? What is that, bro? When you're gonna be playing football, yeah, like, you're really excited for the end of the week to do that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? So yeah. Yeah, that that's what was hard for me. Um, how long did it take you to get back to the grass? So after my operation, I started going outside around six, seven months. Um, everything was going all right. Then as soon as I upped the intensity, and it was like, look, we're gonna get you soon. Hopefully, back in training soon. Change the direction. Knee was just swollen, pain. Then had to get another operation in it. So I had um, Pompey thought I was going to go back for the end of the season. Yeah. Then that got scrapped. And then, yeah, just the same thing happened again, man. Just another three, four months of rehab. That What was meant to be nine months basically turned into 16 months. Wow. Yeah. So it was the longest, man. The longest. And did the manager get sacked during that time? Or did he get relegated and get sacked? Um, what happened? No. Nah, so when I was back getting fit they stayed up that season yeah and then um next season it was in the premier league again then i left okay uh, permanently to bristol rivers okay yeah so when you're at bristol the rehab levels are totally different right rehab facilities like attention to detail care all of that man why like, bristol then no like, why drop I, so I, low you, i didn't really know like you don't you don't know until you're signed yeah. Do you know what i mean you don't you just think football's football club, like it's going to be dealt with. Obviously, every facilities can vary. Yeah. But the, the the basics you think is always going to be a certain level. And just weren't that. Didn't your agent, like, didn't you have other options? Apart there, was from... a, there was a few options, but I think that one made the most sense. Do you know what I mean? What, money as well? You can... The con- be real, be real. <laughs> the contract, like, it was it was a good contract. Yeah. Bristol was a nice city, not far from home. Like, Bristol Rovers, like, it's a big club. Yeah. So, um, I thought... It, it, it made sense and I was looking I was looking forward to going there it's only I'm not saying it's a bad club but the way my situation was handled and dealt with I can't um, I didn't appreciate it yeah did mm. they know about your knee? yeah 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 did I'm, you sign injured or did you sign fit? no nah, I signed fit but f- just fit not like being fit for a month been training like yeah. got back fit like you're clinically fit and you're ready to play Okay. but it was still fresh yeah. do you know what I mean? Going there, I was I was buzzing. I didn't think I had any injury. I thought I'm ready to go, but um, like literally my first session, this was this was this is where it just started. So my first session, I've gone to Holland, and I had some inner soles made, um, and them inner soles were basically to keep the pressure off the outside of my knee. Yeah. Get to Holland now. Go to the first session. Like, oh, where's my boots? I bought a, luckily I bought another pair of boots in my bag, but them inner soles were in the boots that I left oh, in okay. the skip. For some reason, my boots didn't come. But it's my first training session there. So I'm like, do I train? Do I not? Do I say I can't train? I don't want to seem like I'm being like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like difficult. So I trained like without the inner soles. Then boy, bro, then hit the knee that day. The next day I could barely walk. Tried to train like that. Had to pull out straight away. And then that just took another another three months, like just gone, just like that. But then that three months is where nothing got done properly. What the the re the doc, the, the physios rehab, and yeah like, yeah yeah nothing got done properly. Are you though. are you you know when they're like treating you? Are you telling them right like this yeah. is what they done at Huddersfield? And I'm I'm saying like, but obviously you can you can tell them that. But if they feel like they're the ones that are in charge, giving the advice yeah. and in charge, it's like oh well no just do this just do this and it's like all right cool let's do this. But then in my head I'm like, so I'm gonna go and do extra or try and make them make sure I'm doing the right things away yeah. from there. And it's just like, just circles, man. Went in circles, circles, circles. And yeah, that's why. Oh. Did you feel like the same player? My technical ability never really changed. It's more like that explosiveness. Like, I used to be fast, like agile. Yeah. Change speed quick, especially for a left back. And you're coming up against good wingers, you need to be yeah. that. And I, where I had the pain and the swelling all the time, I lost that bit of power. But technically, I didn't I didn't feel too 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 bothered. Yeah. Um, how did you adapt your game like for all of that from being injured how did yeah. you adapt your game to you know to maintain that level as well because you're not agile as you were yeah. so what did you have to do I think I just had to make sure that my quality on the ball was good whether it was crossing distribution from the back 
all that kind of stuff. Even defending, I'll give myself an extra yard. Usually I'll be like, I can afford to make a mistake because yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get back. As that time changes, boy, that little yard is big. It's Man, big. Yeah. yeah, it's big. You can get away with it against certain people, but you might come up against someone that's rapid, change direction quick and, and you, you can't get away with it. What are the fans talking about? Like, what are the fans saying about this? Like, you obviously, you're a promising player who, who they've signed, so they're looking up, they're looking for you to make a big impact, yeah. in, but you're you're injured. Yeah, you're getting awkward, grief. Awkward, man, because for the first, what, four months, three, four months, I'm going to games, watching every every game, fans are, oh, so what's going on? When are you back? Yeah, soon, man, soon. When are you back? Yeah, like, hopefully next week. Then boom, you're not back. You're not back. Same conversation, same conversation. It's just frustrating because then you'll come in, play. When I did finally get into the team and this was, when I did get into the team, I shouldn't have played still. Like, uh, manager got sacked um, and then I got, the manager called me and was like, oh, like, I'm going to play you on Saturday. What, the but, new manager? Yeah, this was on Thursday. But on yeah. the Tuesday, I played my first 23s game in yeah. 16 months. He was like, we got Sunderland away, like, I want you to play. <sighs> Big game. And I was well. like, Phew. he was like, look, call me back and let me know if you want to play or not. Yeah. And I'm thinking... I'm definitely not right, but I have to play. Like I can't say no. Like I ain't played. I just want to play. Yeah. So I phoned him. I was like, "Yeah, man, I'll give you as long as I got in it. Then if I can get through ninety, ended up playing sixty-five minutes. Came off. We done all right as a team. Then put me back in the team. Uh, the next week, I ended up staying in the team for like the second half of the season. But there were a few games I had to miss because like I was taking bare tablets to get through games. Oh, I'm serious? Yeah, bare just anti-inflammatories, painkillers. Um, the main the main thing was I was trying to um, train. I was training maybe like two times a week to just make sure I was fit on Saturday. But then as time wore on, like the manager was like, "Look, I need you to train more." And I was like, "It's gonna be a it's gonna be a detriment to me because by the time Saturday comes, that's when my knee's gonna be the worst. Yeah. So I can train, but on Saturday I'm gonna be dead. Yeah, I'm not gonna be where I should be. Opposed to if you try and just trained like a couple times a week it's not I'm not saying it's right but that's just the way it was yeah so if you want me to play that was what can need to be then that's where like it got a little bit difficult at my, towards the end of my time at Rovers where he's saying you have to train to play I need you to train more I need you to train more if you want to play and I'm like I want you but I can't do you know what I mean yeah so if it's adapted maybe I can but and, and it worked when it was adapted it worked but then it's like look we got two other left backs here they're training oh, wow. every day how can I justify putting you in the team when they're here training and you're not? And I was like, that's the argument. That's the argument. But I can only do what I can do. If I had the same knee as them, I'm sure we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah. And that's why, obviously, you've got to respect them. They're your teammates. You can't be disrespectful when they're your mates as well. So I obviously, it was a selfish game, but yeah, it was it was difficult. Are you speaking to Are you speaking to other people like pros and friends and stuff about loads, it? Loads. Any anyone that I felt like had a issue with their knee or like I remember speaking to Rob Hall I spoke to um, you know Jack Robinson that's at Sheffield United I heard the name left yeah. back was at Liverpool yeah. I spoke to him a few people that have had like bad knee injuries or they've been through it and got through it speaking to just trying to get advice like what did you do what um, worked for you and I'm just trying to implement everything yeah. seeing this person that person but I spent like a lot of money to see physios to try and get myself right but, but it didn't work not, out. No, man. No. When did you finally think this is enough's enough? So, what summer were we in? So, not the summer, just gone. So, that is when I made the decision, yeah. just gone. But before that, the specialist, so at the end of the season where I came back, yeah. I saw the specialist because my knee was just fucked, bro. Like, swelling mad, like double the size of this knee. Like, if you see pictures and videos of it, you'd be like, you're playing on that. It was mad. So I've seen a specialist here yeah, and he's like, scanned my knee, looked at it and said, I'll be honest with you, I think you've got no more than two to three seasons left. Like, serious? Like, I'm looking at him like, yeah, good one. He's like, no, I'm being serious. And he's like, I just didn't really know what to say. Left now, just in bits, just thinking, what? Like, how's man really putting time on my career? I'm thinking, I'm not hearing that anyway. When I saw another specialist, the, the one that's done my operations, yeah. he's like, does most of the Premier League players. Yeah. And he um, basically said the same thing. And I'm like, bro, like, this is serious. <laughs> like, you lot are really telling me, like, if I want to have a quality of life, then I would suggest you stop playing. There's no operation I can give you that is going to help you. But wow. we can try this and it might help you. 
I'm like, do whatever you need to do in it. I'm not stopping. Yeah. Got the operation, felt okay. But as as the intensity went back up, it's just the same, same thing, same cycle. So then the summer just gone. Well, not, it was after the summer. I went to Cholton and trained there for a week. Then after day two, knee was just finished, bro. Wow. Like, swelling, pain. I remember playing 45 minutes of the game on Saturday. I got up and I just could not walk. Like, I couldn't walk. And that's when I was like, bro, I can't do this no more. Did you... Did you um seek advice from other people before you made that decision to so much like so many people it wasn't a thing of just oh i'm done like this thing like, this is the biggest decision i'm ever gonna make yeah. do you know what i mean ever gonna make so i'm speaking to other physios or i speak to like, obviously parents family people that have been through it and like there's uh someone i worked with uh rayan like he had seen my knee from the, when i got to bristol rovers and then as well and it was like literally done everything I could do you know what I mean there was not really many more things I could do so it's like do I keep on chasing my tail and just stressing myself out because that's what it is when you're ultimately putting your all into something that means so much to you and you couldn't give no more you keep on falling short falling short yeah. and then you realize like the size hole that I've got in my knee like that can't be repaired it's only gonna like it's only it's only going one way yeah so it's like, you know what, let me focus on the future and do something that, um, give myself a head start and say like, cool, let's not worry about now and just think about the future. What's your mental state at? From from when you first got injured to retirement, what was your, where's your head at? <sighs> Roller coaster, man. There's, there's days like before, you're just like, how am I not playing, like, how am I not playing football? That's why I was thinking, I just want to be as far away from football as possible because it's going to frustrate the life out of me not being involved or not being able to play. But then as time's gone on, I've realised, bro, I just, I love football. And even if I'm talking to someone about it or giving someone advice, like I love the game, man. Yeah. Like, it's, I just love it. So away from that and the mental state, there's days where it's been like, boy, this is this is mad. This is difficult. But I think I've got, like, I've got good people around me. I've got a solid head. So it's like, I'm just thinking of the future and how I can um, improve myself as a person and that, mm. you know what I mean? And not try and dwell on the past and what's happened and what's gone on. I'm trying to just think, you know, what, what can I do now yeah. to, to make an impact? What about, um, obviously, your parents always have your best interests. What about like, like misses or stuff like that? Did that affect your relationship? Yeah. Like being injured? The reason it did is because the uncertainty, like every six months, it's like, cool. I'm moving here. You coming? Yeah, I'm coming. Like we're, we're living together. Yeah, I lived together for a couple of years, and then it's like next, you move um, this place. Cool. They want to sort out a job. Then it's like, oh, I got to move here. So as well as me being like chasing my dream, yeah, like you got to remember, someone else wants to Chase have their own yeah. life as well and yeah. and sort out their their thing. They're not just relying on you. Yeah. So for me, that was like the biggest thing because once you've got a certain dynamic of oh, you're living together or whatnot, then that dynamic changes becomes difficult and that's where like football obviously has affected that I'm not saying it's a, well, it is a bad thing but do you know what I mean yeah. it's just part of it and that's that's one thing that's probably definitely been frustrating about that as well and in the back of my, her head she's think she's probably thinking he's injured is he going to get another club I or... wouldn't even I, I think I think it's more so um, obviously I'm doing all I can to help you but in the same time I need to like get my stuff elevated otherwise I'm always going to be relying on you yeah and I don't think I think it's probably good that that mindset is there because it's not trying to just be living off me I'm not a Champions League player <laughs> Premier yeah. League player yeah like do you know what I mean yeah it's not as easy as probably people on outside of football will think that it is it's hard but it's not it's not what you need when you're injured and trying to get fit again like her and yes and <laughs> da -da 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 -da, do you know what I'm saying you know what oh, yeah like there's different ways, isn't it? You're, you're thinking, oh, I just want to get fit. I just want to be right. Rah, rah, rah. But that as well is it's a difficult it's a difficult conversation because yeah, you gotta consider two people. You can't just consider yourself all the time. Yeah, no, it's just one thing led to another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh after the chats with all the um the specialists and that, and then you make the decision to re to to retire, what are you thinking? Like when you're writing that note saying, I'm gonna retire. Bro, so when I wrote that note, I was in my car. Cause I'm driving, I'm just thinking, I'm really fucking stop playing football. Like I'm really not gonna play football. Is this even real? Then I'm like thinking, there's days where I'm struggling to walk up the stairs. Like, come on, man. Like, 
it makes it's the only it's the only option the only yeah. choice but as i'm writing it it just don't feel real man like that when i was writing it that was the mad that was the maddest thing for me man typing it, I, i'm thinking oh, delete delete i i didn't want to um i didn't want to um put it out to be honest i didn't actually want to put nothing out but people was like you probably need to because it's just going to be mad uncertain and people like people do like follow my career and probably care about what I've done or what I'm doing so it's probably only respectful to make it clear what's happened and why I'm not playing football no more do you know what I mean it's yeah. not just I didn't just fall by the wayside do you know what I'm saying yeah it was nah, deeper than that did your agent help you after retirement or did he did sorry let me change that what sort of advice was he giving you when you said to him I'm gonna have to retire realistically he was just like his thing was I, d I don't think I could I don't think there's any other route like I feel like it's the only way like I, he's been there on a journey with me like looking okay. at how the knee's gone and, and always hearing me complaining about it so yeah it was kind of had to happen man were yeah. you in a dark place yeah yeah and then COVID come as well same time it's like <laughs> double whammy yeah. you know? double whammy because it's not like you can just get out into the world and think all right cool I'm gonna get into this you're just there dealing with that but it's kind of I think it was a good thing because it forced me to deal with certain emotions and and feelings so yeah how how long were you thinking about it like obviously you spoke to people and they're giving you advice but what made you think i need to retire well like always playing like there was never a day's training or a day in match in the last three years where i felt like i was not worrying about my knee not, not going into a game thinking yeah i just want to play sick today it's just like oh how am i going to get through it and that was probably always in the back of my head. Retirement wasn't in the back of my head. Yeah. Obviously it was there after I had that meeting with the first specialist. And then after that, it was like that 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 time at Cholton and after I couldn't walk, saw another specialist after that and it was like that's that's when I was like, yeah, you know what? Let's let's stop. Um let's stop chasing my tail here, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like it was just immediate boom. It was like it's it's a long time coming. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I just never wanted to Admit it. admit it or yeah. think of it like that I want to think that was a possibility did your has have your feelings towards football changed like from the moment you sent that sent that note saying I'm retired yeah till now like have you hated football I did um I didn't haven't watched it I didn't watch it for a while but now I'm 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 back I don't I don't feel like I don't feel any resentment towards it do you know what I mean it's more just frustration for myself but other than that it's like yeah, no, I still I still love the game, innit? Yeah, yeah. Have you been contacted by the PFA by any chance? I had to contact them. Serious? Yeah, yeah. They don't. Uh, obviously, when you do ask for help, they'll give it to you, but it's not forthcoming. Like really, if you think about it, they should be on the case. Like, bro, oh, my man's retired. Let's reach out, see if he's alright. Yeah, see, yeah. I feel like that's what needs to be done. Not just for people that are retired, people that have got mad injuries, people that now not getting contracts and whatnot. Not she. The mental state thing people are talking about like there is people that haven't got a, a super strong mind yeah and they're probably affected by it well like it's not everyone wants to reach out and ask for help do you know what i mean yeah so they need to push that a little bit more i think how long did you wait before you contacted them because you just said you felt like they would contact you straight away yeah like how long was there um it was a couple of months probably because I, I i was like i'm gonna deal with it i'm all right i got my yeah. family and that i'm cool but you think, you know what, maybe let me just speak to somebody about it, do you know what I'm saying? And see what the um see how if that helps. And it did help to be fair. It did, did help. Yeah. Like, obviously you played football from seven, and then when you sign your pro, yeah, you're looking after yourself. Money, like you've got money. Obviously, I don't know the extent of your contract. When you probably went prem, yeah, your money probably doubled in that. Yeah. But um, you're looking after people now, innit? Like people are looking at you as the big man. Yeah. When you're retiring or when you're dropping in these leagues, your finances do end up drying up. Like, have you started to struggle? Is the PFA helping on that side or? Um, haven't started to struggle. I've always been ready to be smart with my money. Okay. Do you know what I mean? But I've never also, when I was doing well, I never like took it too far. Do you know what I mean? So I haven't. Now I'm like, oh shit, I was living this mad life. Now I've got to settle down. I've always been all right. Yeah. I ain't taking it like that so now it's like nothing's really changed too much it's just you gotta there's certain things that you might have done previously now you probably won't do do you know what I mean just the out of thought of the future and 
let me look after what I've what I've managed to save, mm. and um, that's probably paying off now that I wasn't so frivolous as I could have been. And um, yeah, like obviously, always your mom, siblings, like always gonna look after them, innit? Yeah. And I did, and I would, that's I would never change that. When did you start thinking about a different career path? That you obviously you sent the tech, you're retired, you have your little period of like like to yourselves where mm-hmm. you're just getting to grips with life after football when did you start thinking about other things you know what like I didn't want to think about nothing else but I'm thinking alright cool football's done now what are you going to do like get get to get um, get to grips with it get to grips with it go and yeah. think of something go and think of something um, but I don't think that was probably the best thing to do it was good because you're not just going to sit still waiting and just like being stressed about not playing football yeah but at the same time, I think you actually need that time of just stillness and just reflection. And COVID kind of gave me that. And by like no choice. So it, it gave me that. And now it's like, cool. I know I want to stay in football and I want to be able to pass on knowledge to younger players. I want to be able to like where I think I could have got. I want to be able to help people yeah. get there. And I feel like I've um, definitely got knowledge to pass on. Are the PFA helping you in that that in that angle or helping you in that lane? No. No, this is all off your own back. Either off my back or people that are in football and um know my situation and maybe like me as a person, I don't know, you know. But just calling you come and have a yeah, chat and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. That's so mad. Like surely like... It's mad no, it's, it, when I think about it, it is mad. But I just think, you know what? That that's that in it. But yeah, you would you would think there would be that bit more. Um that bit more from them, do you know what I mean? Yeah. But even down to the person I am speaking to, to at the PFA, like he's cool and that whenever I needed something, he's come through. But it's not enough, really. You is think it? even like when I think when I think about it from football, there's only like in terms of not football players, like people that are my my friends or old teammates. No one like staff wise is is hit like will hit you up and be like, "Oh, how's things?" or "How are you?" Yeah, like, you got Jason, you like legend. Too much time for him. Always like make sure I'm cool and that. Um, obviously your agent um, and I got a phone call from my Bristol Rovers manager when I left other than that not really not really too much on that end yeah you, yeah. but do you I know I'll probably repeat myself but do you feel like you deserve more like your career ended so young like what you're 25 25 now 24 25. Stopped, yeah. yeah 24 you stopped playing football and your PF, the PFA had to you had to contact them I, I'm not, that's not me on for me personally I just think anyone if you've put your fucking from seven years of age full life like remember when you're playing football it's not like yeah come it's a hobby no bro like Gosh. when you're when you're 10, 11 they're saying this is your life yeah. make sure and you're like alright cool this is this, the um, discipline I'm instilling in myself and you're doing that till you're 24 and all of a sudden through not because lack of um, effort discipline character bad attitude um, I know I was good enough to play at that level yeah. so I've just been I, what I struggled with I felt like I'd just been robbed bro like robbed of my career cool it is what it is don't feel sorry for yourself that's life Every, people have gone through worse but you would think that that um, the committee of the PFA whatever would <laughs> give you a little bit more of like yo like <laughs> you've been through a bit do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. but you just gotta just Crack on, man. Do you know what I mean? You just gotta crack on because you can't even expect nothing from no one, man. What would you, what would you like to have seen from them, like to support people in your situation? Um, I feel like be more forthcoming with like this is um like how, first of all like how are you like how actually are you? Yeah, that goes a long way. Do you know what I mean? Fair, like, yeah. are you cool? Yeah. yeah, I'm cool. No, no, no. Are you actually cool? Do you know what I mean? And then past that, like, are uh, um what what do you want to do? Like, here's a, a whole load of things that we can do that are going to assist you in that and might give you the um, opportunity to get to where you want to get to. You Obviously, you have to chase that up for them to come with that, which I get. Yeah. But I just feel like there could be more, man, because the transition is never going to be easy. Never going to be easy. I hear that. Um. So what are you, what are you, what are you doing now? Like, you've retired. What's, what's Tariq oh, yeah. Holmes, Dennis doing now? I, I've, I've tried to... um come to the grips with it. it's not like 
you know, my Instagram name is THD, not THD the footballer, I'm just Tariq, bro. Like, what am I, me as a person? And I know, like, I got good people around me. People probably vouch that I'm a good person as well. So it's just trying to find, like, the what I am away from footballer. Yeah. And like, I've done little things, like, I've been going, there was a long period, um, once my knee started feeling a bit better, I would go boxing every day just to keep fit. Yeah. Just to have that, like, I'm used to getting up every morning and yeah. going training. Cool, let me go up every morning and go, Bit of structure, go box today, yeah. keep that structure and it's just something new, isn't it? Yeah. So that, I went with, um, I see Boats was on here and Dom, I went, I went with them too. <laughs> yeah. And my little brother, um, been doing a lot of that with my little brother, um, been just going to gym, trying to keep structures in my life, man. And just think about what I'm going to do next. Yeah. So if the PFA was to contact you tomorrow and say, what would you like to do? What would you, what would you say? Um, it would definitely be in some sort of helping next generation, whether it's like in, uh, mentorship or something that's like giving back a bit, but something that feels fulfilling to me and something that I want to do. And because I want to stay in the game, like I want to be around football. Yeah. So it's finding which way it's going to fit in for me and okay. which way I can mold myself and build a new career after football that I still am going to love. Yeah. And um, what sort of advice would you give to? injured pl or p players playing on injuries and or you know little niggles and stuff like um, that um first of all when when you are like live live right man like do all the right things do you can do everything you can so you know that i don't know worst case scenario whatever you always there's no excuse you've done as much as you can aside from that when you have got that bit of time where you're focusing on injury start looking at stuff away from ball don't just think oh i'm just a footballer i'm just a footballer there's more like yeah. give yourself a little bit of an idea whether it's investing whether it's property just learn a bit more man like there's more to just going on the pitch and like you can you can find yourself just being just that's it just football like there's more to it and yeah. even because at the end of the day everyone's gonna have to retire one day innit? yeah so you should maybe start looking at what your passion might be away from football early to make yeah. that transition in the future a bit easier sounds like you had to wisen up early what sort of things were you doing during injury, like outside, away from football, like when you was injured, what sort of things were you looking into? This, <laughs> this was my problem at first. I was just like, nope, just in, just getting back fit, just getting back fit. Yeah. And then when I was chilling, just watching Game of Thrones, Seriously? shit like that. But then after it got, after maybe after like nine months, eight months, I was like, all right, cool. Let me start thinking what I would do away from football and what I could do and put in, um, like I tried to put together like little plans and that. And they're all still there. So if I ever needed to go back to them, okay, they'll okay. be there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, um, and it's good to even just, I was teaching myself like, how has this business done well? And looking through it, how you put together a business plan, how you, like, all, all of that kind of stuff. It's not fun, but it's good to know, isn't it? Yeah. It's knowledge that you're going to be able to draw upon once upon, like in the future one day. Did any of your plans fail and you're thinking, oh, like, I don't need this? Or was everything I think all it, right? I think it weren't really, not really a thing of failing. It's just a thing of like applying yourself because it's not, you don't, you don't love that. Like sit down and do it, like spend the hours on it. Yeah. Like, and it's like changing that thing of, oh, you're getting out to play football. You come home, you're tired, play Call of Duty, play this, that, and the other, watch this TV. You're like, cool, now let me actually read a book. Yeah. Let me flip in, go and do some research or look at some stuff. Like that, that's probably like the shift in mentality that I needed and probably helped me a bit. Yeah. Um, Obviously, you're you you've named a few like footballers that have played at a level, and you know I know they kick kickball in the summer and stuff like. Yeah. Can you play five side and stuff like, that or is it just I, since I stopped playing, I, ain't play, I haven't played football, man. Because if I I've tried, I'm thinking, oh, you know what, my, my knee feels alright. Yeah. <laughs> Let me try to do a little jog, and then after I'm like, oh my god, like, I went on a I went on this sounds mad, and I went on a walk the other day with my little sister, yeah. like 45 minute hour yeah. walk, bro. When I got back in. My knee was so mad. So I was thinking, like before I went to Cholton in the summer, I was playing five overs with, with Ants and them lot. Yeah. And bro, I just missed that, man. That's why I want to get my knee to a level where it's like, cool, you can't play professional football, but you can still go and play five overs. Yeah. Like that's that's the shit, man. In the summer, that's what you want to be doing. Yeah, exactly, man. Like, I can't not play for no football. Do but you know what I mean? If your knee's hurting after a walk, like, are you still doing rehab and are you still trying to... No, I'm going to get another operation soon. I'm, oh, wait, okay. I'm waiting on getting that done, yeah. How many operations you had? I had three. Three? Yeah, yeah. So I just need to get this one. Hopefully it gives me that, just something, man, where I can have a little bit of a normal life. And have you got to finance this all yourself? Um, no, the PFA are going to sort oh, okay. that. Okay, yeah, at least yeah, they're yeah. helping. Yeah, they're going to help me with yeah. that, which is good.
All right, man. Thank you for sharing your story, man. Thank you. No, I appreciate you lot having me on here. All right, cheers, Thank man. You. Thanks. All right, quick fire round. Um, best player. Oh boy, you know what? We're doing ability or where they've got to like. No ability. Ability. You know what? I think Adamola Lookman, man. Yeah. Yeah, he's levels, man. It's probably why he's dinking them pens, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, he's um, levels. Best manager you've played. Best manager you've had. Um, David Wagner. Uh, worst trainer. Ah, oh, Jono, man. Clark Harris. Best on a Saturday, but weekdays is mad. <laughs> best stadium you've played in. Wembley. No, I'll take that back. I didn't play. <laughs> Etihad. <laughs> Etihad, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, changing room clown. Carl Bennett. Player most likely to be a manager. Um. Mark Hudson. Best atmosphere. Huddersfield. Best fancy dress outfit. When I was at Bristol Rovers, Tom Nichols went as Tony Craig. You were the manager. Old, um, no, that oh. was another player. Oh, was okay. an older player. Wore his Millwall kit. He's got a wig <laughs> and that. And like it was funny still. Um, biggest fine you've ever paid. I don't know. It wouldn't have been too much, you know. I'd, I never really got fined like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most memorable moment. Getting promoted. Uh, what would you have been if you weren't a footballer? Uh, you know, I probably would have been a cricketer, you know. Serious? Yeah, I was hard. <laughs> <laughs> I was hard when I was young. I had to make a choice still. Serious? Yeah, yeah, okay. I was hard. Okay. And biggest regret? Um, I don't really have no regrets, you know. Nah, yeah, I don't. Yeah, your retirement way, your fault, man. Yeah. So. All right, man. Thanks, Tariq, man. Thank you. Thank uh, you very no much. No problem, man. bro.